Um, at the end of the day, it was COVID. I got laid off and I kind of thought about what can I do? I had around 50,000 followers on Instagram for being a flight attendant and traveling around the globe and taking pictures in China and Thailand and Europe and Africa. And I posted a lot of pictures in a bikini as well. So I started doing modeling for like a hundred bucks an hour, something like that. And then one time, one day, this photographer in the middle of the photo shoot tells me, we've shot a lot of uh, socks and um, leggings and stockings content. He wanted me to do a lot of feet stuff. And he paid me very well. And he told me, you have really pretty toes. Did you ever think about opening an pants? And I was like, what's that? <laughs> I was like, what do you want from me? I'm just trying to make money. Can you get, can I get paid and leave? Mm -hmm. I was like, I thought he's trying to sell me something weird. Yeah. Um, it was like really in the middle of COVID, like April 2020. Mm -hmm. And he's like, yeah, you can just make money and taking pictures of your feet. You have really pretty toes. Your toes are beautiful. You have tiny feet. You can start doing it. Just put pretty nail polish and do it. And I was like, you know what? At this point, I live in LA. It's extremely expensive. Why not? I yeah. like my feet anyway. I already post pictures of my bikinis on Instagram for free. Why not try to make money out of my other pictures of mm -hmm. my bikini and my feet? Um, and I did it. I opened OnlyFans um, at the end of April 2020. Again, one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life, just like moving to the US. I'm so proud of myself. I've done this decision. I just, it changed my life completely yeah. financially and it just gave me stability and I met great people and girlfriends for lives. And it really made my relationship with Nick much stronger. It was just amazing. So it started with no face, just feet for like half a year. And it was pretty decent income for just feet. Yeah. And then I realized, wait, if I make this amount of money for just showing my feet, what can I make out of showing my boobs or showing mm -hmm. my face and show who I am? Which was a huge um, break. It was a huge deal in Israel when they found out who I am, that I'm Israeli. It went all over the newspapers, all over the news, all over the media. I was actually on the global news, like the... the <laughs> what are like, I'm just like, what are the headlines? Like Israeli girl joins OnlyFans? It doesn't yeah. seem like that's... She's starting to do, she moved to the US and now she's a porn star. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the porn star all name, over. the porn star gets clicks. Yeah, a lot of, uh, it said in Hebrew that now I'm a porn star. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, and that's before I even started doing sexual stuff. It was just a bunch of topless and bikini and feet and you know like teasing softcore taking my thongs off in the shower when it's really dark stuff like sensual stuff like yeah. boudoir stuff mm -hmm. um, but for them it was like big uh, sensation that's mm -hmm. the word I was looking for it was a huge sensation in Israel I found out myself all over the internet and like one day became from having 50,000 followers on Instagram to 250,000 followers in like mm -hmm. two weeks. And they're all from there, like back then in 2020, my Instagram went from getting like 10,000 views on a story to like 80,000 viewers on my stories. Like insane, like the, the, the engagement got crazy. Comments were mean. A lot of reports, my Instagram was shutting down every week because the community there did not like what I do. Did you get a spike in your OnlyFans subscriptions? <laughs> did I get one? Did you get a spike in your OnlyFans subscriptions? Yes. <laughs> so was it worth it? <laughs> it's just funny, you know what I mean? It's like all these people that like go on your free platform and yell at you, but then like do they also <laughs> join your OnlyFans too, you know what I mean? To see who you are. Well, I mean, people are hypocritical. They are. So how did you feel when you when those headlines started coming out? Um, the only thing I cared about was my family, honestly, yeah. at the beginning. Um, it was everyone. It was my first boyfriend contacting me, telling me that I'm lost and I need help. And if I need to go to rehab, if I'm on drugs, um, if I'm, I need any help, if they should call the police and get me out of where I'm at. Um, it was my dad texting me the worst text ever. It was almost my birthday that month when it got huge. And he was like, you're the biggest disappointment ever. I never want you to be my daughter. I don't want to talk to you ever again. Oh my gosh. Um, it's my girlfriends from high school that are now married with kids and they're my age. They're all like, this is disgusting. I don't want you to be next to my kids and family. Um, to my mom that was like, you know what? Are you happy? Are you healthy? Are you sober? No one is taking advantage of you. Don't care about what people think. Are you happy? That's what my mom told me when I called her crying that this is huge and I'm all over the news and I want to I wanna hide in a basement for like two years till I'm no longer part of the big news there. Mm -hmm. um, and she made me realize that if I wake up in the morning and I feel good about myself, I don't care what it shows on the media. It could show a lot of other things. Last week I went viral 
on uh, influencers on the wild. In the wild, it's like a Instagram. Oh, I know that Instagram account. That thing's hilarious. I was with my slave, uh, just bought a $12,000 Chanel bag, and we were taking pictures with the Chanel uh, bag in front of the Chanel logo. And the comments are like, this girl looks like she has a Sheen bag, not a Chanel. She's so trashy. Those girls are taking uses of men. They take advantage of them. I feel bad for this woman. She looks so ugly. She looks so old. And I'm like, I'm so used to those comments yeah. where I'm like, Okay, you're just dying to do what I do, maybe. Or maybe they don't, you know? Maybe they just don't agree with my lifestyle, which is acceptable. But why being so mean on talkbacks? Like, why do you have to write all the negative stuff? Just yeah. don't comment. People, but, like, mm. I mean, people tend to view everybody else through the lens of their own experience. <laughs> I think that's, like, the biggest problem. Like, people see, so, like, someone doing what you do, and they think, I could never do that. So, therefore... I would be very unhappy doing that. So therefore, yeah. she must be very unhappy doing that because I can't imagine that somebody else in the world would think differently, would see things differently than me and have a different experience. And that's just like, I think that's where like a lot of people kind of fall short. And that's something that I've learned in my my many years on this planet. It's just like <laughs> recognizing that like we're all different. We've all been like, we're a mix of our like how we've grown up, the um, like literally our genetic makeup, like so many different things. and different things are different for different people. And you don't really get to say like whether or not someone's doing what's right for them, you know, just cause it's not right for you. It's just that projection, which I think is really unhealthy. Yeah. But also too, I mean, what I'm talking about right now, you know, when I, earlier I mentioned about the social stigma that's like really damaging. I mean, like all those things that those people are saying to you. It's horrible. Like that's really awful. Comments that can evil. be really, and if you're not tough and you don't have thick skin, like that can be really hurtful and damaging. Oh yeah. You know, um, so, I mean, I just, I personally, like, I never read the comments. I try not to. I used to cry and now I'm just like, okay, I look at their profile sometimes to see who they are. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like middle-aged women that just got divorced and they mm -hmm. have kids that like, I don't know, they post pictures of their cats and I'm like, they, they call me names, they call me fat, they call me ugly, old. Um, they called me um, taking advantage of innocent men, user. I don't even know so many names. And I'm like, this man wanted to gift me mm -hmm. that gift. And if not me, he would do it with another yeah. Domina, so yeah. Dominatrix. So I didn't force him to do anything. I didn't have to have sex with him for that. I'm not forced to do anything. And some of the comments are like, oh, she has to spread her legs right after. I'm like, nope did not <laughs> yeah so and again and even if you do you should, yeah. if, you, if you want to why not yeah. like it's your life it's your body if i want to have sex with multiple you know partners which i have girlfriends on porn industry that have done game bangs and they loved it and they had fun yeah so as long as you're a mature adult person and you do what you want to be doing and you're comfortable doing it so why judging you know it's just yeah. you, you can see it as an example of how i grew up with my community you know so i could have been like one of those people and judge but i chose to get out of this bubble and live my life mm -hmm. which is very mentally like refreshing yeah um i feel so much better than i felt as a child as a teenager that i felt so like secluded and i felt so i really felt like a prisoner in my own house every day yeah yeah i felt like i'm pretending to put a mask on every morning and now i feel so free like i can put a costume on and do a cosplay and I still film myself so again um, when it got super viral last week the video of me with my slave shopping in Rodeo Drive I tried not to read the comments but sometimes I read them just to remind myself that okay there was people like this out there maybe mm -hmm. I should be careful not always being super open-minded because mm -hmm. I am very open-minded yeah so I try it is hard How, do you have a relationship with your father at all now? no no I don't think I well, spoke to him in a few years now yeah. I'm sorry. Do you hope that that will resolve itself someday? We're so far apart at this yeah. point. Like, <laughs> I'm sure you've seen my pictures on Penthouse and that made him super mad. So yeah. I don't I don't think it's fixable at this point. Maybe one day uh, he wants me to, for, in his opinion, when I turned 24 last year, he texted me that I should have had three kids by now. So in that community where he's from, you have to have like eight kids and you have to be a housewife and you have to get pregnant every year. That's why my mom had every year she had a child. So um, when I'm 26, my brother's 25, my brother's 24. Um, so wow. she was literally pregnant every year. And then she told my father, I don't want to be pregnant anymore. I just want a year break from my body. Yeah. And he's like, no, God wants you to be pregnant every year. That's your job as my wife to get pregnant and wow. give me kids. <laughs> I mean, God, talk about, you know, people talk about how you must be trafficked in your situation and you're doing things for your body it's that you don't it. want. 
And like you hear something like that, like, I mean, talk about your mom had no agency over her body. Yeah. She didn't get to choose whether or not she, you know, was bearing more children. That was somebody else's decision. I mean, that's like. Sounds worse than porn to me. Yeah, kind of. (laughs) A lot of. (laughs) But yeah, um, so in his opinion, I should be a mom to like at least three kids by now and just, you know, serve my husband at home. (sighs) Hello, my amazing listeners. You know how much I love bringing this podcast to your ears every week. So if you're looking a way to support the show and get some fantastic perks, I've got just the thing, my Patreon page. With plans starting at just $5 a month, you can be part of our exclusive community. Your support not only helps to keep this podcast going, but it also unlocks some really cool bonuses. Imagine getting access to the live streams of my interviews as they happen. You'll be right in the middle of the action, seeing all of the unedited moments. But that's not all. As a Patreon member, you'll also get exclusive bonus content. I'm talking extra mini episodes where our guests answer questions submitted by you. Plus, you'll have access to my fine art photography and behind the scenes videos, giving you a sneak peek into my creative process. And guess what? If you opt for a discounted year-long membership, you'll save even more while supporting the show. Longtime subscribers even get free HRU merchandise as a token of my gratitude. So want to join us? Head over to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered and become a part of our growing community. Your support means the world to me. Let's make this podcast even better.